Rose Tire Stadium here in Florida, where tonight the Pedro Winds host the Tulio Hornets in the 2021 season. Hello, everybody. This is Nick Long along with Randall Sims, and we welcome you in to our broadcast booth here tonight for the season opener. Tonight will be the debut of new head football coach J.R. Compton. And uh, coming here, his first ever head coaching responsibilities in his 30 plus years of coaching. A native of Hale Center who went on to play at West Texas A&M University and was eventually inducted into the Buffalo's Hall of Fame. And he comes here after being an assistant coach at Lubbock Coronado. Well, the Tulia Hornets, uh, a 3A Division I team, are coached by Steve Corsi, and he is in his second year uh, for the Hornets. Well, Randall, we come into the season opener, and uh, like always, lots of questions and wondering what does this season uh, bring, but this year with the coaching change and uh, everything and uh, apparently a change in schemes totally, on offense and defense, uh, it, it makes you wonder, what are we facing in 2021? And, and you know, Nick, that's the thing. You know, we, we've seen a coaching change, and that's a lot of times a breath of fresh air. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, somebody new eyes on the product and kind of kind of fit a scheme to match what the talent is. The biggest change I noticed uh, was the 3-4 defense. 3-4 defense, uh, you see it sometimes, not a lot. Uh, Florida doesn't have a lot of size. They do have some size. They got some kids with some big size. But uh, in order for a 3 4 to work, you got to have a beast in a nose guard. And we're going to find that out tonight if they've got that. The reason why is because you also got to have fast linebackers. I think Florida's got plenty of speed. It's going to be if they've got the guys to, to occupy the deep, the offensive line to keep uh, those, play, those, those tackles and those guards off the linebackers. And if, they, if, they, if they've got that, then Florida is going to have a, a successful year. I would like to make a note. Tonight is a, or today, this, this season is a 40th anniversary for Florida to football. It has been 40 years since Florida has won a playoff game. Back in 1981 was the last time they won a playoff game against a Hoka. So a lot riding on this season. We'll see if they can change that, and we'll go on from there. Well, we will uh, talk more about uh, this season opener here tonight between the Tulia Hornets and the Florida Twins. Talking to both coaches speaking with this week, nearly a mirror image of uh, what will be a field of offense, defensive attacks, both teams, and really the type of athletes they each has. We back where our more for our season opener as we end to an 8 o'clock kickoff of Florida versus the Hornets in the 63rd meeting between these two schools. More right this on the anytime and from any turn row. If you'd like to discuss strategies to protect your operation, call Tim, Tanner, or Callie at 983-2511. Hazard Insurance, Ag Risk Specialist, and Authorized Arm Tech Agent. Everybody knows that regular physical activity helps contribute to healthier, longer lives. But did you know that involvement in high school sports delivers a wide array of non-physical benefits as well? People who play competitive sports in high school demonstrate more competence, leadership, and self-respect. Student-athletes manifest stronger peer relationships, higher self-esteem, and have a closer sense of family. McCoy Jen is proud to support Floyd Data ISD and its student-athletes. McCoy Jen, Jenning Floyd County Cotton since 1925. Texas means a lot of things. Here at Happy State Bank, we think it can be summed up with one word, community. With roots dating back to 1908 in Happy, Texas, we've grown to 60 locations from the Panhandle to the South Plains, the Hill Country, Dallas, Fort Worth, and in between. You'll find us doing what we do best, serving our communities with financial offerings you expect, with genuine, know-you-by-name service that leaves our customers smiling. From community to community. Learn more about us at happybank.com. Member FDIC. 
Welcome back here to Charles Tire Stadium, just over 10 minutes away from uh, kickoff here. I've seen one the opener today coming off of an eight season for the uh, COVID spring 2020. The Tulia Hornets uh, finished at four and six in both of these schools, just outside of the playoff positions uh, by finishing fifth in their respective districts. And you know, Randall, when you analyze these two schools here of Tulia and Florida, they have very similar situations of the type of districts that they are in. Uh, if Florida, everyone in this area knows of the three-headed monsters of New Deal and uh, Post and Sundown. And uh, and same thing goes for Tulia up in their district to the north with the likes of Canadian Childress and Spearman. Yeah. And that leaves one spot left for the playoffs. That leaves uh, the, the fourth spot. So that's what you're playing for when we come into this season. And uh, so both of them are facing that in a, in a very uh, similar fashions. And, you know, tonight uh, by no means it, going to make or break either one season, but I think it, it does carry uh, some importance, the fact of getting that springboard and uh, getting off to a good start. These are two teams definitely uh, programmed striving to – Get above that 500 mark if they can, and uh, and uh, put put themselves in a position down the home stretch. Yeah, last year Florida Ada, uh, fell behind early in that game against Toya. They played them last year at Toya. Toya got ahead uh, tw uh, early in that ball game, and Florida Ada came back in the third quarter and scored again in the fourth to get within two. 28-26 was the final of that ball game. That was as close as what Florida Ada could get. Florida lost the year before that, and they won back in 2018, I think, against Toya. At Toya was the last time Florida won against this team. Um, Florida comes in tonight, as you said. Um, they uh, The 63rd game, is that what you said? Yes. Against these two teams, they're 32-29-1 and 29 and one as a series. Uh, historically, this is the 1,028th game Florida has played, the 105th season that we're starting for the whirlwinds and a very historic uh, uh, season for the whirlwinds. All right. Well, we are going to take another break. We'll come back. We'll look at the starting lineups of both ball clubs, Abdulia and Plata. We're coming of a season opener right after this. On 6 one flip. Keep your diesel engine running at peak performance this month. Pick up Pete Blue Death. Diesel exhaust fluid, $12.49 in the two and a half gallon box. Or Napa conventional motor oil, $11.99 in the five quart jug. And clean it up with Scott Shop Towels, $2.49 a roll. This month only at Napa Auto Parts on the Rawls Highway, Floyd Data. What's new at TQ? Check this out. The one and only Bacon Ranch Hunger Buster, now for a limited time. For you ranch fanatics, it's your new number one. Pepper Jack lovers, we've got you covered. Add in the crispy bacon that everyone craves, and you've got a flavor combo only DQ can deliver. Oh, and for your sweet tooth, a blizzard of a month. That's too good to miss. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. In farming, you know that timing is critical to help your crop meet its maximum potential. From planting date to irrigation to timely application of your crop protection products, even a day can make a difference. With a fleet of free planes, Probasco Flying Service and Floyd Data is the first place to call for efficient, timely aerial application of your farm chemicals. For more than 30 years, Probasco Flying Service has served the farmers and ranchers of Floyd and the surrounding counties, and they look forward to continuing that service for another 30 years. Call Probasco Flying Service at 983-2314. Back here at Charles Tire Stadium, Nick Long and uh, Randall Sims with you. As we have the opening kickoff at five and a half minutes from the end of the season. Looking at Floyd offensively tonight in their uh, sped offense, they'll open up with a senior right back on, a 171-pound senior. The run by Andres Mendoza, 176-pound junior. In the slot back positions will be Saul Riss, a 150-pound junior, and Aiden Trino, a 173-pound sophomore. The wide receiver, Phil Rodriguez, 145-pound junior, and so Donovan Rocha, another junior at 160 pounds. The offensive line at center, Andrew Harris, 180-pound senior. The guts, Armando Cruz, 165-pound 
sophomore and Vivian Ramos, uh, 185 pound senior. The uh, Buckingham Eccles, 4 foot Edgar Severa, 230 pound sophomore, and Adagato, a 262 pound junior. By an average 200 pounds of man, the starting offensive lineup is nice of three seniors, six years, and uh, two sophomores. For the uh, Tulio, it's Rama Kisla, athletic quarterback, 170 pound junior, trying to turn after a power boundary that ended his uh, season last year in game number two. The running back, Damian Cadillo, 150 pound junior, wide receivers. Braden Franco, a senior, and Cohen Medea, a junior. Wow, to Ethan Riss, a senior, and Isaiah Guerrera, a junior. The offensive line uh, at uh, the uh, center, Ethan Chosko, 270 pounds. Over. The uh, guard, Joe Barrera, 214 pounds, a three-year starter. And also Caleb McDowell, 185 pounds. Three tackles, Wayne, 203 pounds, and Alan Mercy, 10 pounds, senior. Julia's line, 210 pounds uh, in the trench. They start five, six, five juniors, and one, the only sophomore, that is on the uh, varsity roster for the uh, Tulio Horns. Defensively, for the look at in their three more defense. Davian Ray, 180 pound senior, and Severa, 230 pound sophomore, with the Eccles. The Nuscar, Adam Delgado, a 262 pound junior. Four linebackers on the Isaiah Alvarado, a junior, and a sophomore. The side, Andres Mendoza, and Hayden Hinesley, a junior, and sophomore, respectively. Out on the corners will be Dagocha and Fabricus. Both of them are juniors. As two safety, Jason Cook and also Saul Reyes. And Rando, when you break down these rosters, look at that. There is only a sophomore on this Tulia team that suited up here tonight. Boy Data has got 10 sophomores that are going to be not only suited up, they will be playing. Yeah, upperclassmen in size, that's going to be Toya's strength as Toya won the coin flip. They deferred to the second half. They will receive and I believe defend the uh, north end zone. Uh, currently it is 88 degrees here in Floyd Data. Wind at 11 miles an hour out of the south. And as this game plays on around 9 o'clock, it should drop into this around 79, 78. The wind should fall steadily down to about seven to six to seven miles an hour, uh, staying out of the same direction. As uh, both teams are out of the uh, tunnels, and we are awaiting the national anthem. Well, Floyd Ada, the home team with their uh, green jerseys uh, tonight, accented in white and black and the solid uh, green helmet. No logo has been put on their helmet uh, as of yet. The uh, Tulia Hornets, uh, the white tops and the uh, bottoms, uh, the pants, and they have a, a solid uh, maroon helmet. And uh, two teams are uh, facing one another, and uh, we're getting ready to go down to the field for the playing of the National Anthem here at Charles Tire Stadium. Playing in the national anthem by the Floyd High School uh, marching band. Well, Randall, as you said, Floyd Data will receive the opening kickoff to begin the season. Kind of your thoughts, what could be a key some here tonight uh, in the opening game against the Tulio Hornets? Well, Floyd is going to have to play well. They're going to have to keep their defensive linemen uh, fresh in that 3 4 defense. Uh, the Lions are going to have to flash the ball and try to keep the game close as uh, Tulia, looking at their, their roster, they have a lot of huge young men, both offensive and defensively, and they're going to have their play, will have their hands full trying to control that line. I think, that, that, I think that's going to be the story of the game is, is the Lions. Absolutely, and as always, 
turnovers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're huge. And uh, uh, the team that can win that turnover battle more than likely will have the better chance of uh, coming out victorious. Well, Florida will be dropping back two receivers in Saul Reyes and uh, Jason Cooper to receive the uh, opening kickoff uh, for the uh, from the Atulia Hornets in Daniel Velasquez. Floyd Ada will be going from your left to right here in the uh, first quarter of play. And the kicker approaches the ball and the 2021 season is underway. This one's going to be fielded at the 18 yard line, the up back for Floyd Ada that brings it out across the 25 and gets to the uh, 27 yard line. I believe Aiden Trevino was the one that was on the return for the Whirlwinds. So they will start off their first offensive series of the season, first down at their 25 yard line. So again, the Whirlwinds offensively last this year will be at quarterback. Nosa will be uh, running back. There will be some instances where they will be back set, but dominantly Floyd Ada will be running and back set. This is two inside six, Reyes and Aiden Trevino, and Philip Rodriguez and Dutcha on the outside, five man front. Last hits in the shotgun. And he looks to his left and he throws and the receiver falls down just across the uh, 40 yard line. And a flag is lying at the 50 yard line. So we'll see if we get pass interference on the first play of the season. It's like we do, Randall. So Fleta will get a first down out of this. And uh, they will move the ball out to the crop of 40 yard line, 42, without a play. And now the world is out closer to mid yards down at the 42 yard line. 11 seconds into the game. After Glasscock. Gives over Mendoza's backfield and going to drop for a loss inside of the 40 as an interior lineman in that Tulia defense. And Barrios and uh, Xavier Rikas met just about the time he received the handoff. Loss of two on the kick. Second down, 12. Now Chronicle wins. Three receivers break out to the right side, one to the left. The Gascock is in the gun. Snap to Glasscock, quick to the right side, drops the ball to Trevino. Trevino across the 40, get across the original line of scrimmage, the 42, and it's knocked out of bounds. Looks to be just inside of Florida. Three yard line. No, the ball is touching that hash mark here on the near side. So now Florida is facing a 39 situation from the 43. Snap to Glasscock, looks across the middle. He throws and it is incomplete. As Tulia had the pass coverage back then. The intended shooter uh, for the uh, whirlwinds that uh, was Dunroja. So the pass all incomplete and now is fourth and nine for Floydata. And Isaiah Alvarado checks into the game and Floyd's punter. Went deep for the Hornets at a 15 yard line on the south end of the stadium. He gets a fast one, the rusher takes the ball under, and he is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Got a high snap, and Alvarado uh, decided he needed to run with it, and they're going to be stopped on out. And Tulio to have excellent position at their Floyd Data four yard line. So a miscue in a kicking game, Floyd Data, and Tulio has got tremendous position now in win territory at 41. The 10 with the over to go here in the game, and there is no Tolia will come to the line of scrimmage. Two running backs in the backfield. McCaslin, the running back, hands the ball off to Sio, going off tackle outside. He goes inside of the 40 and takes his way down to the 37 yard line of Floyd Data and picks up about four yards on that uh, carry. Three receivers wide to the right. This time, one running back in the backfield. Snap to Sadio. Quick pass to the right side, and it's incomplete. It's, it, it, it's the feet of his receiver on the far side. And that's, that's probably the best thing is you didn't want to catch your Tulia. I was in the grass and hurried down. So third down now for the Tulia, third and six. And they from Floyd is 37. McCaslin pass to the left side and it is caught and he gets near first yardage. The ball was caught at the two and fights to the one yard line on the receiving end of that uh, pass time uh, for the Hornets. Jordan Powell, I believe. So now it's first down for you. At Floyd Davis, 31-yard line, they make just enough for the first down. Handoff 
to a slot coming around from the left side and crosses the 30 and drags defenders with him of a floor. And uh, Powell gets down to about the uh, 26 yard line. Just a little simple handoff and he gained four yards on that play. On plays into the threatening to score. Sat down on the play. Deep for the end zone and is caught for a Tulia touchdown, but there was a flag at the beginning of this play. And let's see if this will hold up a beautiful arc and pass that time by Trevon McCaslin and caught in the zone for a Tulia touchdown. And apparently, him lining up, it is a uh, flag, must have been against Florida. It was against Florida. And Tulia uh, will get the touchdown. Vikas will try to win the extra point game. Let's see who caught that pass. Did you see Nick? And the on the way. And it is up, and it is good. Time out on the field. It is 7, Florida and We'll be back with the Hornets kickoff right after they out on Flip and Field. I'm Taylor Sue with Going and Going Insurance. I was born in Florida, raised in Florida, and I'm thankful to be able to do business in Florida. Going and Going was established in 1926 and will be here for years to come. I've got an arsenal of insurance carriers to make sure that you get the coverage you need at the right price. We take pride in offering great customer service and want to make sure that your insurance dollars go further. Call us in Florida, Health Center in Petersburg. For all your insurance needs, get going. In West Texas, it's cotton that clothes our children, feeds our families, and drives our economy. Whether you're a first-year farmer or you've been in the business for years, when it comes to ginning your cotton, you need reliability, timely service, and experience. Since 1972, Floydata Co-op Gin has remained a leader in the field of agriculture and continues to provide the service you've come to expect from a leader. Floydata Co-op Gin, leading the way when it comes to your cotton. What does legacy mean to you? Webster describes it as something to be passed from generation to generation. Plains Land Bank wants to help you finance your legacy. Hi, I'm Ryan Pierce. I'm a loan officer here in our Plainview office. Plains Land Bank is passionate about agriculture and passionate about helping producers be successful. We know that land is more than your livelihood. It's your legacy. Visit plainslink.com or come see me, Ryan Pierce, in our office on West 7th Street and help you out. Back at Old Touch Day, M for day 7 and nothing to two Hornets as Tulia 51 yards in five plays to score on a 26 yard touch pass from Trevon McCaslin to uh, throwing the ball to Brady Rico. Floyd Data filled a kick in the end and uh, returned. There's a flag on the play as they were uh, held down inside the five yard line. And Floyd Data will have the ball for the second time. Not first down at the 30 yard line, trailing by a score 7 to 0. Receivers wide on each side. Glasscock in the gun. Gives right ahead to Mendoza. And Mendoza going between the guard and tackle left side of the ball. Gets maybe a yard nearly two less out to the uh, 22 yard line. Orlando, uh, Who was the run on that one? That was a Mendoza. Mendoza, okay. yeah. gotcha. Well, the Hornets definitely capitalized on the good field position there for the drive. And the McCaslin blew through a beautiful key pass into the whirlwind end zone. Stab to uh, glass passes on the left side. Caught by Reyes. Reyes out across the 30. 30 by 4. He is to midfield and gets into Hornet territory. Oh, Saul Reyes, probably the fast player on Florida's team. And this one will net about 34 yards of play. A quick hit to Randall down to the line of scrimmage and right found the seam and went upfield. And now Lloyd is in Hornet territory. Give a handoff straight ahead to Mendoza. Mendoza just involved in a rugby match right now. Yeah, yeah. Inside of the four five gains one tough yard. Oh, where's that one? Was hit just a, pretty much as soon as he got the ball. Second and nine for the uh, whirlwinds. As uh, for the first time tonight, they are in. Hornet territory was seven and a half minutes ago here in this first quarter of play. Rocha and Reyes wide to the right. Two running back backfield now. A snap and they snap it to the back Mendoza. 540 and gets down to near the 20th 30-yard line. And he is brought down defensively by Brian Robinson. Enough for a first down. But now will face the third and three situation. At the Yard line. What is switch quarterbacks? It's not glass coming there anymore. It's out right. and they dropped snap to him and he took off with it. Now it's over. The snap over Alvarado's head and it goes back across midfield. And uh, so it will be placed down at the four, four yard line. And uh, Florida is going to lose 15 yards in that play. Now it's four to four Florida and again Alvarado the quarterback. 
pass right side. And this one is uh, caught, and uh, it is brought in for by the uh, whirlwind. And he is quickly brought down, and now Floyd is facing four long yardage. So on that last run play that the whirlwind said, not Mendoza that, that they do, it was Randy Duck. Alvarado Jr. had come into the ball game, placing the uh, starter, Trace Glassock. Alvarado drops back for a hit of their sack punt of the game. They did not get one off in their first series of downs. Yeah, Tulia's got the ball, yeah. And that was a down. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. were stopped. Turned it over. So they were yeah. stopped on down, and now Tulia has it at the Floyd Day to 39 yard line and on first down throw a pass of about six on the play and get outside the Warwick's five yard line. McCaslin drops the ball, rolls left, throwing off of, uh, rolls left, throw right hit, and throws an incomplete pass down inside of uh, the uh, yard line. His intended receiver for uh, Tulia that time was Guerrero. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 5.35 in the first quarter. 7 to nothing. Tulia lead, and now they say 7 4 at Florida's 33 yard line. Second line started offensively in World Country. And off straight ahead. And uh, the running back is met and dropped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. And now, third and four in Tulia. One of the defensive stand here, fourth down. Fourth and four. Fourth and four. As with the ball with 06. And they're going for it. And they're at the 33 line. Leg against Tulia. Instead of fourth and four, it will be fourth and nine. I'll believe that's your strategy. Up seven to nothing to your lead. Later with five minutes left to play in the first quarter. Puya will go for it on fourth and nine at 38 yard line. Let's see what the Horns uh, do here. They score first touchdown on a 20 start. McCaslin. He will be in the shotgun, and we've got a timeout. And of course, if Tulio wants to talk things over, we'll quit that nothing. The fourth, the fourth, fourth, not coming from the Hornets when we turn on a 06 half feet. Is your home haunted? You can't see it, but it's there. It's called Phantom Power, and it could be draining your dollars. Think this is off? Think again. Phantom Power drains electricity on equipment that's plugged in, sucking up to 10% of your home's energy use. In one year, that's enough to buy 150 donuts. Fight the phantoms. Unplug unused devices in the kitchen and bathroom. Plug into power bars with timers or auto shut off. An energy saving message from Floyd Data Power and Light. And now, a letter of thanks from Quality Body Shop in Floyd Data. Turn here to Charles Tire Stadium, fourth and nine, confronting the Tulia Hornets. They have a seven up lead here with four pretty in the first quarter of play. And see what this blue on this equation is eight or eight at Flade to three eight yard line. They're lining up like they may punt as uh, Velasquez drops back to the 50 yard line and a short punt. And it takes a big hornet that's inside of the team, the 10, and going to get out near the two yard line as. Uh, Turned it out being a, a, a good selection there by the Hornets as they will nail Floydata deep in their end of the field here. Somewhere. About well, the they're fourth. bringing the ball out to the. Oh, they're going to say that it went in the end zone. The player touched it. It bounced and somebody touched it. Well, they're going to bring it out to the 20. All right. So Floydata, I think, is a break out of that situation. They could have been starting around the two-yard line, and uh, the whirlwinds will start at their 20. That's kind of been their situation throughout this first quarter. The first drive starting at their 25, and the second straight position, Floydata, begins at their own 20. 4.30 to go in the first quarter. A touchdown lead by Tulia. A 26-yard pass for a touchdown by McCaslin for the Hornets. And now Glasscock back in the game, the senior at quarterback. Takes the snap, looks right, throws, caught Trevino at the 24, and he is going to quickly be brought down at that point. About a four-yard gain uh, on the play, and making the tackle was Ivan Garcia for the Hornets. Well, they'll place it at the 25, so we'll say a five-yard gain on that pass completion from Glacock to Trevino. Five now whirlwinds. 
Two receivers wide on each side for Floyd. And they give straight ahead to Ooh. Mendoza. And the junior running back for the Whirlwinds has no running room. And he stopped Cole at the line of scrimmage. Now it's third and five facing Floyd Data here on this situation. Floyd has made one first down so far in this game, a 34 yard pass completion to Reyes got him into Hornet territory. Snap back to Glasscock, looking right. He throws, it's caught Trevino for a first down as he is at the 35 yard line. A 10 yard pass play across the middle from Trace Glasscock to Aiden Trevino and Floyd Ada will move the chains on the far side of the field with 3.09 to go here in the first quarter of play. Trevino just came loose inside the, right in the middle of the field, a pocket set down in it, wait for Glasscock to find him, made a good catch and set in. Two wide outs again, Glasscock in the gun. Forced out of the pocket, Glasscock is gonna get back to the line of scrimmage and that is uh, going to be it as he was tackled there on the uh, middle of the uh, defense there by Joe Barrera. No gain on the play. Second and 10, 2.33 left there in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, your score, Tulia leads over Florida. Same formation, two wide outs to each side of the field, one running back. The snap, Alvarado now the quarterback. He goes on a quarterback draw across the 40, 42. Gonna be short of a whirlwind first down by about two or three yards, seeing where they do place it. It's going to be at the 43 yard line. And again, the time to Floyd Data at a third and two situation. And now Glasscock is back in the game at quarterback. I don't like the two quarterback situation. I don't like that. I, I'd pick a quarterback and go with them is what, what I always say, but whatever Shotgun works. Shotgun formation. Throw across the middle and it's caught for a Floyd Ada first down at midfield. And it was Aiden Trevino that made the catch. And I think that's his third reception of so. the ball game. And Floyd Ada for the second straight possession is back in the Hornet territory. This time at Tulia's 49 yard line with a minute 27 to go in this first quarter of play. Glasscock makes the snap and gives to the running back. And Mendoza trying to get around the left end, cuts it out field on a late flag comes as Mendoza is down inside of the 47 of Tulia. That flag came at the very end of that play. And let's see, looks like it's gonna be against the whirlwinds as the official is marching towards the north end. And it goes well, back into whirlwind foul. territory, and it's big, 15 yep. yards stepped off. So now Florida will be facing a first and 24 situation. Six plays have been run so far on this possession for the whirlwind. Snap to Glasscock. Glasscock forced out of the pocket, rolling right, dumps the ball off to Mendoza, his uh, running back, and Mendoza savages a yard or two and gets out to about the 37 yard line. So still Floyd Ada with a, now a second down situation and in excess of 20 yards. He will need to get down to the 39 yard line of Tulia to make a first down. This time one receiver wide to the right and there is a trio of whirlwinds to the left side. And a delay in the game here is the officials and the clock ticks down and that ends the first quarter of play. So the Tulia Hornets have a seven to nothing lead for the Florida Whirlwinds in the 2021 season opener. And we'll be back for the second quarter of play. This is Whirlwind, Whirlwind Football on Flip FM.
difference. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Most jobs take a few steps to complete, but they shouldn't take a few thousand hat steps roaming through a big warehouse. Instead, make a quick trip to Ace. Our neighborhood stores have the quality brands you trust, with local experts giving the advice you rely on. So Ace can help you every step along the way. Ace on the Rawls Highway in Floyd Data open 8 to 7 weekdays till 6.30 Saturday, 1 to 5 Sunday. Back at Charles Tire Stadium, we go to the second quarter of play, and the Hornets in front of the Floyd Ada Whirlwind, 7 to nothing. Floyd Ada just ran a screen pass on the last play that moved the ball out to their 43, and now they have a third and 18 situation. Glasscock in the gun, and forced out of the pocket, rolling left, throws, and throws the ball off to Mendoza, and Mendoza is hit hard at the 49 of Floyd Ada, right in front of the whirlwind bench, and knocked out of bounds, and it will be short of a whirlwind first down, and now it will be fourth down coming, and 11 for the Isaiah Alredo will uh, drop back to punt. So Floyd for the second consecutive possession got into Hornet territory, but unable to uh, keep their momentum going. And kicks the ball away, and it's going to be fielded at the 22-yard line. Brings the ball out across the uh, 30, is uh, racing down the far sideline, the 40, the 50, and breaks the tackle, the 40, the 30, and that uh, for the uh, horse, Braden Frail on that punt return. And it started at their 22-yard line and brought the thing all the way back down into whirlwind territory. But there is a flag lying back up on the field on the Hornets end at the 28-yard line. And uh, that just erased about a 50-yard punt return that time by Braden Franco. So Tulia now will start back on their end of the field see exactly where they place the ball down and looks to be somewhere close to the 20 yard line they're stepping off yardage it's going to be side of the 20 for Tulia and ball is going to be placed at the 18 they could have had it at Floridata's 22 had that punt return stood up but did not McCaffrey in the backfield two running backs and Gives the ball off to Sadio, out across the 20, hurdles a whirlwind defender, 25, and is knocked out of bounds for uh, near the 30-yard line. That's going to be enough for a Tulia first down and a 12-yard run by the running back, Sadio. So the chains move for the Tulia Hornets at their 30-yard line. This is the deepest that they have started in this ball game. Their other two possessions, they started on Floyd Ada's end of the field. Pass to the left side, and the uh, ball is dropped on the pass to Guerrera at a behind the line of scrimmage. Floyd Ada, that covered very well defensively. And with the incomplete pass, second and 10 with 2.05 to go in the uh, second quarter of play for the Hornets. Three receivers wide to the right side for Tulio, one to the left side, one running back in the backfield. Stap to McCaslett, gives the ball off to the running back, and he's met and dropped back in the uh, back, or at the, uh, uh, near the light of scrimmage. And getting in there, Floyd Ada, uh, forward defensively uh, for Floyd Ada that time was Edgar Severa. They'll place the ball just inside of the Hornets 31. Third nine needed for Tulia here. On their end of the field, McCaslin drops back. Now rolling left, still looking. He throws and it's tipped and intercepted by Floyd Ada at the 45 yard line. And coming up with the ball for the Whirlwinds this time is Jason Cooper. So a third down situation and we have the first turnover of the night. Jason Cooper has intercepted a Trevon McCaslin pass. Bladeda has got their best field position of the game at the Horn Fort one yard line with 9.23 to go in the half. And the whirlwinds are down by a touchdown. Seven to nothing. 
Well, Rando, good to set it plays. Uh, Tom Fighter got a break when Tori had that beautiful punt return uh, negated. Yep, yep. Penalties will kill you. And then the heads up play, tips the ball. Cooper plays Tom, made the interception, gives Floyd a shot here. 9 12 4 half. Two receivers side to each side. The snap to Glasscock. Glasscock throws to the right side and oh. almost picked off at about the 28-yard line as a Tulia defender that time went diving uh, for the uh, ball. Uh, Barrientes and almost came up with an INT for the Hornets, but that one hit the ground first. Well, they looked out there, almost gave it right back. So second and 10 now for Floyd Ada. Again, they operate at Tulia's 41-yard line. Give to the running back, Mendoza. And Mendoza goes nowhere. He is met at the line of scrimmage. And the tackle made there by Aldo Marine, a 200-pound senior for that Hornet defensive front. That is Lopez that's in the game now, number 22, the running back. So he had that last carry? Yep. So for the... Uh, Whirlwinds uh, now uh, back in the uh, backfield. Uh, Ian Lopez snap to Glasscock. Throws on the left side looking for Saul Reyes, and it's incomplete as Floyd Ada had twin coverage back, uh, and the ball went down inside of the 20 yard line, and the pass falls incomplete. I'll bring up fourth down. We'll see. Since Floyd doesn't really have a punter, but well, it looks like they may punt. Didn't know if they were going to go like. I can't remember the name of the team back east that didn't believe in punting or, or and they only did onside kicks. They made the news a few years ago. And now a timeout. Didn't Saw see Reyes a little bit slow in getting up as he uh, was the intended repass receiver and knocked the ground inside of the 20. Here we go. But hopefully he's okay as he goes to Florida to bench. Now Isaiah Alvarado will drop back to punt for the whirlwinds. And one man deep for Tulia. And this one gets his kick away and this one goes into the end zone for a touchback. And uh, the Tulia Hornets will take over first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to go until halftime here in the season opener. A seven to nothing Flodata uh, trailing to Tulia and the uh, Hornets scored only touchdown on their first possession on a 26 yard pass from McCaslin to Franco. So the Hornets have the ball for the fourth time in this ball game. And there's whistles just as the ball is snapped. It's one thing they changed a year or two ago was how fast they play the game. And they don't waste time wherever they do switch for that. There's a penalty. So five yards being marked off against Tulia. Back to the 15-yard line is where the Hornets uh, will be operating. Three wide outs, and they give the ball to their running back. He breaks the tackle at the 15, comes out across the 20, and the 25 yard line, Sadia, the uh, player, and gets close to a Hornet. Uh, well, he's going to be short. They need to get to the 30 for a first down, and he runs the ball out to the uh, 25. So a second down and or third down in five situation. Now coming for the uh, Tulia Hornets, second and five. Second. second and five. Can't read the marker, I no, can't, uh, on the, the far side. The glare is. Uh, yeah, real glare. A Caslin in the gun, one running back, three wide outs. Pass to the left side, and it's caught by Guerrera. And Guerrera gets across the 30 to the 30 five yard line or that uh, receiver is Austin Bond and uh, moves it out to the 35 yard line. First down, Tulia Hornets. 7.23 to go until halftime and again, 
whistles come and time they're signaling over to Floyd Ada and apparently they call time out just before Tulia was able to uh, snap the play. We'll be back. Uh, Floyd Ada down seven to nothing midway in the second quarter of play. This is Whirlwind Football on Flip FM. Seven weekdays till 6.30 Saturday, 1 to 5 Sunday. I'm James. Seven twenty-one to go in the second quarter of play. Seven and nothing. Rolling right flag of play. Looking, airs it deep, and it's caught at the thirty-eight yard line of the uh, Florida uh, Whirlwinds. And hauling that pass in was Ethan Reyes, but the flag back at the beginning of the play and a crackback block is going to be called on Tulia. Well, ran so far it seems like that Tulia has made a few more mistakes than has Floyd Ada in the penalty category. Yeah, the Toya's kind of been their own worst enemy here in the last two series. Two big penalties have moved them back, and now this one, they're probably their most devastating one, because that one moves them all the way back to the 20. Yard line. Yeah. 21, let's say. They could have been at Floyd Ada's 38. So now it is First and 25 situation. McCaslin, the sole person in the backfield, screen pass to the left side. It is caught across the 20, 25, 30, and going to the 40-yard uh, uh, line is Jeremy Rodriguez, I believe, as he got the ball out near the 40-yard uh, line, and that's not going to be enough for a substantial game. And now second and six will be facing the Hornets at their own 40-yard line. McCaslin fakes to Rodriguez. Keys running right and avoids one tackler and gets out of bounds smartly at the 49-yard line. Just enough for a Tulia first down by a four-yard cushion. And that will move the chains for the Hornets, and they will have it first and 10 at their 49-yard line with six and a half minutes to go until intermission and still protecting a seven to nothing lead. Who was the runner on that one? That was the quarterback, okay. McCaslin, passed okay. to the left side, and this one is, uh, is dropped. And uh, so that uh, falls incomplete, and uh, at the 49, second down coming for the Hornets out near midfield at their 49 yard line. One running back, snap again to McCaslin, looks left, throws deep, and it is tipped away at the last moment. Good coverage defensively for Floyd Ada, and I believe the defender that was back on the play is Donovan Rocha. And it looked like up. there for a moment that the Tulia receiver had a, a step on the defender, but Rocha made a lunge for it, and he comes up hobbled, and he is now uh, hopping off of the field, but a tremendous yep. play to make that last one incomplete. So there's going to be a, delay, a timeout on the field for a moment as Rocha comes off the field. And this early in the season, that's hard to tell if that's – twisted ankle or just a cramp as both teams come back up the line of scrimmage waiting for Rocha to get off the field and here we go. Third and ten for Tulia at their 49 yard line. No running backs. McCaslin throws deep across the middle and it is caught at the 25 yard line and on receiving end was Jordan Powell. 
Powell has been a good receiver so far in this first half. He's had a couple of good receptions for the Hornets. Quickly, Tully is going without a no huddle off the end inside of the 20 on the red zone. Pass to the left side, and this one is out to Franco. Franco sidesteps some defenders inside of the 10. A flag comes in, but Franco did get to the end zone. What appears to be a Tulia touchdown, but there is a flag lying at the 13, and this one may be erased. Let's see what the official so, says. They're going to step it off against Tulia. So that does bring back a approximate 18 yard touchdown pass and they'll place the ball down at the 22 yard line of the whirlwinds and that's where the Hornets will be operating with a seven to nothing lead. And a first and 13 is what the scoreboard says. Snap and it is dropped by the quarterback but he's able to get back on it at the 26 yard line. So a loss of a few more yards this time by the Hornets. We'll push it back to the 27. They will need to get down to the nine. So a second and 18 coming for Dooley. Three wide outs to the right, two to the left for the Hornets. McCaslin drops the ball off to the right side and receiver fights his way down near the 20 yard line as that was Braden Robinson that hauled in that uh, Trevon Maslin pass. The other one of those players shook up. He's going to stay though. So the ball's at the 21. Third. And now it's third and 12. Tulio with a 7 to nothing lead in Florida with a very important defensive stance here at this point at their own 21-yard line. Snap to McCaslin. Running left, he throws, and it is caught by Franco. Franco, outside of the 10, gets close to the first down for the Hornets. He need to reach the nine, and I believe he got to the third line of Florida. And now it's third down and one long yard. There's it fourth and one. Fourth, fourth and one, and Tullius going to go for it here. But first, they're going to spend a timeout. We'll take a break with them. Floyd Ada trailing 7 0 to the Tulio Hornets. And uh, we'll be back with the very important fourth down situation from Tulia here on Flip FM. Sims with you. Fourth and one situation coming up here, Randall. The ball lying square at the far hash mark. The 10 yard line of the Florida Whirlwinds and pulled up seven to nothing. And Florida looking for a big defensive stop here. To Florida needs to answer. Need something positive to go into halftime. Four minutes left before they go to that break. Tulia looking to add points here. They need a yard to keep going. Two running backs now in the backfield, or three, as they uh, have the full backfield. They give up the middle, and the running back burst up the middle. Goes for 10 yards, and the touchdown. They came out a wishbone look attack that time with the center, uh, the quarterback underneath the uh, center. Randall, I'm not positive, but I think it was Bun, number 12, the ball carrier. It was, it was Medea. Medea. Uh, uh, eight, I think. Was it, it, it was Medea. he the ball carrier? Yep, that was who that was. So it is now a 13 to nothing. Uh, Tulia lead. Low snap. The ball is placed and the kick is blocked by Floyd Day. It's picked up by a whirlwind, but going to be tackled at the 19. And uh, so the extra point attempt fails by the Tulia Hornets. Four minutes, one second left in half time, and Tulia does uh, produce on a fourth and one, and they now lead 13 to nothing over the whirlwinds. Back with Hornets kickoff right after this on 1061 Flip Avenue.
Back here at Charles Tire Stadium, the Tulia Hornets, a 13 to nothing lead over the Florida Whirlwinds, just kicked the ball away, and the Whirlwind receiver fumbled the ball around at the 15-yard uh, line and uh, was able to jump on it at his 12, and that is where the uh, Whirlwinds will have possession with 3.57 to go until halftime, down by 13 points. That last possession, uh, Tulio went 80 yards in 10 plays and scoring on a 10-yard run by Damian Cadillo. So now let's see what the Whirlwind offense can come up here just before halftime, down by 13 points. Glasscock at quarterback, hands the balls straight ahead to the running back, Mendoza, and gets nowhere, no gain at the uh, 15 or 12 yard line. For this possession, it started at the 15, not the 12, and anyway, no gain on that last play. Glasscock gun, quick pass, and this one over the outstretched hands of Andy Mendoza coming out of the backfield. And now Florida seems to be struggling a little bit offensively, and there is a timeout taken on the field, and a third and 12 facing the Whirlwinds with 3.22 to go until halftime. They trail 13 to nothing. Back and see what Florida can do on third down. You're listening to Whirlwind Football on 1061 Flip FM. Here's Charles Fire Stadium, three minutes, 22 seconds to go in the second quarter of play. Floyd Ape on there the field at the 15-yard line. They are trailing 13-0 and a third and 12 situation right here. Snap to Glasscock, quick pass left side looking for Alvarado, and it bounces out of his hands and was almost intercepted by a Hornet defender at the Guerrero, but it falls incomplete. And now, fourth down is coming for the Whirlwinds, and Alvarado will try to punt back in the shadows of his goal line at about the one-yard line. Not a good situation to be in. One return man at the 46 on Tullia's end of the field. Gets it away, high end over in kick. Bounces at the 45, a good whirlwind bounce across midfield. Goes on down across the 40, down to the 37 yard line. So that ended up being a good punt by uh, Isaiah Alvarado for Floyd Ada. And Tulia will have possession first and 10 at their own 37 yard line, leading by a 13 to zero count. Tulia scored one touchdown in each quarter of uh, this ball game. Floyd Ada twice has been able to cross midfield offensively, but unable to keep anything sustained. McCaslin in the gun, no running backs. Forced out of the pocket, rolling left, throws it deep, and it is. Is it intercepted? I believe it is. And Rocha. looks like uh, Floyd Ada uh, has intercepted a pass, Donovan Rocha. And that's the second interception Caslin has thrown tonight. And Jason Cooper 
and Donovan Rocha have come up with turnovers for the Florida Whirlwinds. That definitely a bright spot for Florida in this uh, ball game. So the Whirlwinds with 2.56 to go on the clock get the ball back here late in the second quarter of play. Down by 13 points and see if they can get something going to give them some momentum going into the locker room at half. Give to the running back straight ahead, across the 35 and moves it to the 39 yard line. And that is going to be a, a run there of about six or seven yards. Mendoza with the carry on that one. Yeah, so, uh, moved it from the 33 to the 39, a six yard gain, second and four, Floyd Ada. Give again, Mendoza coming left, trying to get around the corner, and he does get the first down as he moves across the 45 to the 46 yard line, and the Whirlwind still operating on their end of the field. Clock at two minutes and 21 seconds to go until halftime as the clock was stopped momentarily to reset the chains. Now it's back to running. Glasscock hands the ball off. Mendoza, third straight carry, and he fights his way to midfield. So they've gone to the right off tackle with Mendoza, around the left end, and now straight ahead on their three plays and gain four yards, and it will be a second and six for Floyd Aiden. The clock is under two minutes to go until halftime. Where wins down by 13 to the Hornets. Snap to Glasscock, play action, drops the ball off to Rodriguez, breaks a tackle, 45, 40, 35, first down, Florida to Whirlwinds into Tulia Hornet territory. Nice reception by Philip Rodriguez, and then the run after the reception, breaking a tackle or two along the way, and he's down to the Hornets' 34-yard line. 123 to go in the half and the whirlwind offense showing some life on this offensive possession here and see if they have enough time to possibly put some points on the scoreboard before half. Thought they were going to call a timeout. Looked like they were going to call a timeout. Now the, the referee is saying roll the clock. Well, you can't wave your arms and act like you're going to call a timeout and then decide that you want the clock to roll. Now the clock does start rolling. A minute 14 to go here in the first half. Floyd Data is at the Tulia 34 yard line. Low snap to Glasscock, pass to the right side Ooh. and it's caught and the receiver is immediately uh, dropped. And on the receiving end of that play was Saul Reyes. And boy, just as he about caught the ball, yeah. he was leveled by a Hornet and lost a yard or so on the, a couple of yards on the play. Tattooed. Back to the 37. He got hit as soon as he caught the ball and lost about two or three yards. Florida having some trouble on their next play as it's now under 30 seconds Looks left like. here in the first half of play. And uh, well, he's going to go for one play. Coach Compton signaled the referee, I want to call a timeout when it reaches a point. So the Whirlwinds will take a timeout with 16 seconds to go until halftime, down 13 to nothing. And a situation coming. We'll be back right after this on Flip FM. left here in the first half of play and Floyd Day last uh, situation let the clock roll down and now they're facing a second and 12 
And they're at the 40. 7 yard line of Tulia trailing 13 to nothing just before half. Glackock dropping back, screen pass, drops the ball off to Mendoza, and Mendoza is going to be tripped up at 35 and falls to the 33 yard line, and the clock is continuing to roll, and that is going to end the first half of play. That was a great play by Matthew Merritt. He went through a defend, I mean, a blocker to tap, make that tackle. Wow. So both teams will head to the locker room across the way, and the Tulia Hornets have a lead here uh, as they go to the locker room by a score of 13 to nothing in this season opener against the Florida Whirlwinds. We'll be back with our halftime look at Randall Sims' stats of Florida uh, Collegiate ISD Superintendent, Dr. Gilbert Trevino, all of that and more coming up here on halftime of Floyd Ada World Football on 106.1 Flip FM. Webster describes it as something to be passed from generation to generation. Plains Land Bank wants to help you finance your legacy. Hi, I'm Ryan Pierce. I'm a loan officer here in our Plainview office. Plains Land Bank is passionate about agriculture and passionate about helping producers be successful. We know that land is more than your livelihood. It's your legacy. Visit PlainsLandBank.com or come see me, Ryan Pierce, in our office on West 7th Street and see how we
Charles Tire Stadium in Floydata. Nick Long and Randall Sims with you. Glad to have you along at halftime. Floydata Whirlwinds are down by a 13 to nothing score to the Atulia Hornets, who scored a touchdown, uh, one each in the first and the uh, second periods. The Hornets scored the first time they had the ball when stopping the Whirlwinds at their own 40-yard line, and uh, the quarterback, Trayvon Caslin executed a five-play scoring drive, ending in a 26-yard touchdown pass to Braden Franco. Their extra point kick was good, and Toria had a 7 0 lead at the 8.51 mark of the first quarter. We moved into the uh, second quarter of play, and the Hornets executed a 80-yard 10-play drive that resulted in a touchdown on a 10-yard run by Damian uh, Carrillo, and their kick was blocked on the extra point, and Tulia held a 13-0 lead there at that point, and that's the way it stood at halftime. Floydata's secondary has come up with a couple of pass interceptions that have uh, really been beneficial uh, on that aspect of the ball game uh, for the whirlwinds. There's also been a couple of penalties that have hurt Tulia in their situations. One in particular was a punt return that was down to the 22-yard line of the whirlwinds, and it was brought back uh, due to a flag, and they started way back, uh, totally nearly on the opposite end of the field, somewhere back in the uh, 20s. Uh, on their end of the field. But uh, there's been good plays by both the sides in this first half. Tulia, though, has had a few more, and they lead by a score of uh, 13 uh, to nothing here at halftime, Randall. Looking at stats right quick before we get a guest in here to interview. Um, Tulia, and these aren't going to be perfect because lots of glitches. First game of the season, we, we got some difficulties. We're going to work through them, but this is the best I can tell. Total offense, uh, Toya, uh, 125 yards total offense to Florida is 104. Uh, Florida has run 22 plays to Florida is 32. Uh, passing, Toya with 80 yards of passing. Florida with 84 yards of passing. Rushing favors Toya, 45 to 20. Uh, you talked about uh, first downs. First downs are tied at seven each. Uh, Toya's Castlin, the quarterback, has 80 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions at the half. Trace Glasscock, 84 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Rushing-wise, uh, Cedillo with 17 yards, McCaslin with 14 yards, Medea with 10 and a touchdown, Powell with four, Florida rushing. Uh, Mendoza with 29 yards. He leads Florida in rushing. And uh, kind of a low low yardage affair there in the first half. Nick, not much going on. Penalties. Toya with five penalties in the first half. Florida with one. And that's been your uh, that's been your story. Penalties and turnovers has kept Toya close to Florida. Uh Interceptions, that's two interceptions. That's your, that's your, that's your turnovers. Well, so. for sure. I mean, as far as the mistake category that you just mentioned, uh, Florida winning both of those situations, and uh, so uh, anyway, uh, uh, there's been some first game jitters. I, I would uh, think. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say there's any dominance uh, here, but uh, Tulia with the two touchdown lead. Uh, uh, over Floyd Ada, the whirlwinds are just going to really have to keep those mistakes to a minimum uh, to uh, uh, make a comeback in this uh, second half of play. Well, let's you know, take a quick break and come back. We'll get Gilbert Trevino in here to talk about the school year if you want to. Let's do it. Right. You are listening to Whirlwind Football here on Flip FM as uh, Floyd Ada's down 13 to nothing back right after this timeout.
started. What's up? What we got? Yeah, What's I told people we made it through two weeks, 35 more to go. <laughs> Yeah, I no, it, it, it's been a, a real positive start. You know, when I, I've been here 23 years, and not, I can't recall. Not, not positive on cases, right? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. yeah, you worry about saying the word positive <laughs> yeah. here lately. No kidding. No, but uh, culture-wise, it's just been one of, the, one of the greatest starts that we've ever had. Uh, like I said, I've been here for 23 years, and this is the most positive start that we've had uh, on both campuses. You can just feel when you walk onto campus, the culture, the kids seem to be having fun, staff seems to, to be having fun at on both campuses so we couldn't ask for a better start well it's great you know we got a lot of things going on got cross country got football uh what, what's the fronts of those what's going on well uh cross country kicked off their season last night they ran under the lights at wt uh, so just a great experience for the handful of kids i think we have about six seven girls and i think three or four boys uh but they they competed well uh started off the the, the season as best as they could and then you work uh, and get better and i, I think uh, the, the district is in october ball wise uh you you see the product tonight jv pulled out a 26 to 0 victory in tulia last night uh the the you know, tonight uh, doing some good things. I think the inexperience is really what is hurting tonight right now. Uh, defensively, they, they, you know, they've done some things, have a couple of takeaways, couldn't ask for, for more. Just got to get it going offensively. And as Florida is making their way back out on the field, What's the school year hold? How's it? How's it ac academically? What's going on with that? Oh, we're, we're coming off uh, one of our strongest uh, academic performances uh, last school year. Uh, you know, you, lots of districts. You know, they refer to the COVID slide where they didn't do well academically. We are on the opposite end of that spectrum. We performed well. You know, we grew in several areas. Uh, you know, so we we're excited about the future academically that uh, that that our our uh, our district uh, faces. Uh, but definitely, we want to build on that success. And, and start getting better academically. One of the biggest things that we did a couple years ago became the collegiate uh, independent school district. Uh, so kids uh, are taking dual credit courses at no cost to their parents. Uh, we had uh, about 55% of our student body last year took uh, at least one dual credit course. Uh, and in the spring, we had a 90% success rate, which means they earned a C or better. Uh, you know, there's some that may have earned a D, and technically that's passing in college, but we want them to have a C or better. Uh, so th uh, w lots of kids are on their way to earning that associate's degree before they they graduate our high school. That is a fantastic program that you have going there in Florida. Or here at Florida, we're here at Florida. Um, I see a new press box across the way that, that that got built over here, and and lots of there's some more projects coming up on the horizon. Yeah, Florida. definitely the press box visitors press box wasn't enclosed. Uh, uh, you know, there, there's lots of reasons it wasn't a part of the bond project, but I felt that in order to have playoff games here to entice teams to come play postseason games here, we needed to have a good visitors press box. So that's one of the projects that we uh, undertook the last couple of weeks where we enclosed it, air conditioned. You know, it, it it's a it's a quality press box. Uh, one of the other things that uh, will kick off here within the next couple of weeks, hopefully, is the construction of that new softball field uh, where the old high school was constructed. So you, most people have seen it. I mean, it's it's leveled out. Uh, there's no building there anymore. So we're just waiting on the final plans and getting the ball rolling. And, and our architectural firm said that should get going the first of next month. And, and uh, kind of sad for alumni like, like me. The old school building's gone, but new things coming. Also on the horizon in the next year, new renovation to the baseball field, I assume. And yeah, some yeah. Concession. Uh, we're going to add, uh, you know, a couple of new tennis courts. Can uh, renovate the existing tennis courts, so we'll be able to host some meets here. Uh, we are, we will at uh, the final phase construction project. The bond project is to address the baseball field, turf that field, and uh, you know, renovate those facilities. Uh, and then one of the other things that we, that we'll get going in September, first uh is uh, the construction of a new uh, pig barn out at the ag farm. So definitely lots of upgrades that we've undertaken the last couple of years. It, it was definitely needed in Floyd Ada. Uh, we have quality facilities. You couple that with the standing academics that, that we offer. Uh, Floyd Ada is a great place to be. Well, I'm sure this isn't the last time we're going to talk to you this year. Um, lots of exciting things on the horizon for Floyd Ada and currently going on. It, it's a it's fun time to be a whirlwind. Here in Florida. It is, yeah. Yeah, we're excited about our new staff. You know, Coach Compton kicks off his tenure tonight. Uh, like I said, I mean, at, at this point in the year, you just want to get that system in. The defense is head and shoulders above the offense right now. Uh, but I expect this team to compete, and you'll see it throughout this game. There, there's no quit in them. And yeah. You know, Coach Compton has them going. Well, good to talk to you, Gilbert. Yes, nice sir. Nice to hear from you anytime. 
Come talk to us, and we're going to take a quick break and be back with the second half of play here in Florida as the Whirlwinds lead our trail Tulia 13 to nothing. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to Florida High School Football on 1061 Flip FM. Back at Charles Tire Stadium as we are beginning the second half of play. Floyd Ada down 13 to nothing to Tulia. Short uh, kick that lands near the 35 and the Tulia return man picks it up and loses a couple of yards back to the uh, 33 yard line. And uh, that is where the uh, Hornets will begin possession here to uh, start the second half of play. Tulia scored one touchdown in each quarter of this game. A 20-shot pass by their quarterback, Trevon uh, McCaslin, to Braden Franco in the first, and then a 10-yard run by Damian Cedillo in the second quarter of play. So they do place it at the 35. That's where the Hornets will begin. They come out in an I formation, and they give it to the up back, and uh, he moves it a few yards to near the uh, 37 yard line in Cedillo uh, was the uh, ball carrier. You know, Randy, we've seen them run a no back set, a one back set, a wishbone that they scored a touchdown on, and now they start the second half out of the eye. And yeah, they, they multiple sets. Toya's pretty versatile so far. They lead 13 to nothing and kind of have control. We'll see how they come out of the halftime break here. Again, they're in the wishbone this time. The quarterback underneath the center. And he gives off to the left side. And the running back fights for a few yards to the 40. Bond was the uh, ball carrier uh, that time. So now it's third down and five. Boy, now I can see the yard marker. Look at that, yep, Randall. Yep, it's lit up. <laughs> it's lit up. Well, my concern is I don't know why this ends, the, these lights over here in the end zone aren't on. That that concerns me. As um, There's a big dark spot on the north end of the field. Third down and five needed for the Tulia Hornets at their own 40-yard line. Delay a game. It's going to be called against Tulia. Back it up. Looking at some of the scores, couldn't find that many of our future foes, but one kind of that caught my attention was Muleshoe was blanking sundown 13 to nothing at halftime in uh, their opener. So now it is third and 10 for the Hornets at their 35. McCaslin drops back, throws, and it is caught. And the receiver gets to the 40-yard line, back to the line of scrimmage. That is it. Good coverage in the whirlwind secondary that time uh, by Alvarez and also Mendoza, both coming from linebacker positions. And now the ball is placed at the 40, and it's fourth and five, and Tulia is going for it. And there's flags on the way as they snap. They're going to blow it dead. I don't know, they got flooded to jump, but I don't know if they were drawn off sides. And now the players are moving yep. towards the north end of the field, and so a gamble there on a fourth down situation by Tulia. I think they made it work. Yep, off sides, I believe, against Florida. It's gonna be first and 10 for Tulia. And my, they're 40. My internet is just terrible today. I was gonna to try to check to see if I had any scores, but I can't get anything to pull up. 
One running back in the backfield, McCaslin back in the gun, and he hands the ball off, and the ball carrier gets to the 45-yard line of scrimmage, and that is it, as he was brought down. Uh, Jeremy Rodriguez was the ball carrier, and the tackle was made there in the middle of the whirlwind uh, defense there as uh, Alvarado and Trevino were a pair of the whirlwinds there on the stop. Second and 10 now for Tulia. McCaslin rolling right, looking. He throws and it is caught for the first down into whirlwind territory at the uh, 42 yard line. Powell, Jordan Powell with that catch. So the change will move for the Tulia, Tulia Hornets. Powell's been a good receiver so far for Tulia, and again, now working down towards that end of the field, pass to the right side, and it's caught by a uh, Tulia slot back and gets across the 40 to the Whirlwind's 37-yard line. And now, second down situation coming. I think the light is working on this north. It, it is, but it's not that far. But, but it's that northeast set yeah. of lights no, that are not on. I think you're right. And here's the give to the running back up the middle, and Rodriguez is met at the line of scrimmage. And so now it's third down situation. No gain on that play. Play was stopped at the 38-yard line of Floyd Ada. So now the world wins with a big defensive situation here on a third down and six with 8.09 to go here in the third quarter of play. And Tulia still holding a 13 to nothing lead that they had at halftime. McCaslin dropping back, looking left. He throws, and it is dropped by the intended receiver, Jordan Powell. And now fourth down is coming for the Hornets. And I think this situation, they're not going to be able to run that. I'll draw you yeah, off because five no. yards won't get it done. No, and McCaslin, his receiver, and the worst place you can hit him right in the hands, and it went right through him as that last play. And uh, now Tulia with a fourth and six. Yep. At Floyd Ada's 38-yard line. See what the whirlwind defense can do here. No running backs. McCaslin passes He's to short. the left side, and he caught it at the 33, but it's going short of a first down. Braden Franco was receiver, and Floyd Ada will stop the Tulia Hornets uh, at their own 33-yard line, and that's where the Whirlwinds will take the ball with seven minutes and 48 seconds to go here in the third quarter, trailing 13 to nothing. So Floyd will get the ball on a turnover. Great defensive stand. As Toya hit the receiver, and he immediately fell down, didn't look to see where the marker was. And now Floyd will take over on 33. Two Seven. wide outs to the right, one to the left. Two running backs are in the backfield. And the uh, give to the first running back is Mendoza. And Andres Mendoza crosses the 35, gets to the 37-yard line. And the uh, tackle was made in there by Ivan Garcia for the horse. It's going to set up a second and six situation. What is that? So now, <laughs> Fredata coming to the line. Two wide outs wide to the right, one to the left, slot to the right side for the Whirlwinds. Snap back to glass, evades one rusher, throws, and it's intercepted at the uh, uh, Reyes at the 35-30, and he's going to go to the house with a pick six and a 35-yard interception return for a touchdown returned by Ethan Reyes. And that will give the Tulia Hornets a 19 to nothing lead now with seven minutes to go here in the third quarter of play. Tulia will line up for the extra point as Reyes just set back, saw the throw, jumped the route, made a great interception, nifty move, picked up a blocker about the 20 yard line and he was untouched into the end zone after that. So the first defensive touchdown of the ball game, Tulia has now scored with a pass, a run, and now a pick six. Here's Valenzuela with the kick, and the ball is uh, blocked away. And uh, 
So the extra point attempt will fail, and the Julia Hornets will have a thir uh, 19 to nothing lead over the Florida Whirlwinds with seven minutes to go in the third quarter of play. Back with the Hornets kickoff right after this timeout. Back here at Charles Tire Stadium as we are midway in the third quarter of play in the Tulia Hornets, a pick six for touchdown lead now 19 to nothing over the uh, Florida Whirlwinds and the Hornets kick the ball away, a short kick to the far side and the ball is going to be uh, marked dead inside of the 40 yard line on uh, Florida's end of the field and looks like they're at about the 38, I think. 38, 39, so dark down there. <laughs> Again, the lights are out on the northeast side set of lights. The rest of them are all working here, but really cast a shadow uh, when you look across the way into that uh, northeast corner and on that far sideline. So Floyd Data will have the football and uh, a better field position yeah, than I thought to be out at their 44-yard line. Offsides penalty on the kick. So we'll see what the Whirlwinds uh, can do here. The first series of the second half gives straight ahead to Mendoza, and Mendoza crosses the 45 and fights for yardage out to midfield. And... Uh, is going to be brought down at that point in nearly a six yard run. And now we're going to have an, an official tout yep. for an injury. And uh, we'll take a break with them. 6.44 to go in the third quarter of play. Tulia leading 19 to nothing in this season opener here on uh, 1061 Flip FM. With us, it's Back here at Charles Tire Stadium as the injured player uh, for the Whirlwinds, and Mendoza trots off of the field after that six yard run. Floyd Data down 13 to nothing here in the third quarter of play. This is the first time that Floyd had the ball in the second half of play. Quarterback switch again, Nick. Alfredo is in the game at the uh, quarterback and gives ball to Lopez, the run back, I believe. 22. And, and he gets to about the 48-yard uh, line, 49. He's a little bit of yardage uh, on that carry, Elon Lopez. And now third down situation coming for the whirlwinds. They'll need five on this situation. Switching. Now Glasscock <laughs> is coming back into the game to play at quarterback. Snap to Glasscock, looked left, steps out of the pocket, throws deep, and it's intercepted by a Tulia Hornet defender just inside of the 35-yard line, returns it to 
the uh, 37. And that is the second interception that Floyd Ada has now had in this uh, second half of play. And Tulia will get the football and they'll have it at their 36 yard line. So the turnovers are now even at two apiece with each ball club. They didn't take very long. Game. <laughs> it was no. quick. Floyd Ada's run only four plays now in this uh, second half of play. And Julio will have the ball at their, uh, at their 36. Six. 36. Blackfield this time, we're back underneath the well formation. He has a head to the fullback, and he moves it for the Hornets for a couple of yards near the 30-yard line. And as they unstablish one, was that uh, ball carrier that time. But yeah, four, number eight, number eight. Was it eight? Yep. So the Hornets come back to the line of scrimmage, and again, in that wishbone formation, Second and eight. This time they a halfback. It gets away from him. Runs back inside of the 20. Picks it up. Avoids a tackle, but not the next. And is going to be dropped for a loss back at the 25-yard line. Once again, so, Toyer, their own worst enemy, is a uh, big busted play there. They lose some yards. Now, up, go ahead. Third and 21. Yes, I was going to start. <laughs> so let's see what the Hornets uh, can do here. So a, a, a pitch on that uh, option type offense that got away from the running back. Now they go back to the shotgun with McCaslin dropping back inside. Goes to the 10, rolling left. He throws, and it is nearly caught but dropped at the 30 yard line. Or did the second receiver? It. Uh, did they say they caught it? Well, see, it now looks like they're moving back. Yeah. Uh, so it, I thought there for a moment they were going to mark the ball at the 30. Yeah. But they mark it at the 25. Incomplete pass. 4.04 to go in the third. Now it's fourth down 21. And Tulia is going to uh, punt the ball away. Velasquez dropping uh, back to a punt. One man back deep for the uh, Whirlwinds. Good punt. And Floyd Aid is going to wave off a saw. Uh, Reyes was the return man back for the Whirlwinds and does not attempt to field it as it takes a Tulia Hornet. That's inside of the 40 down to the 35 yard line. And that is where Floyd Ada will have possession first down at their 35. 352 left to play here in the third quarter. 19 to nothing to your leads as we're not going to take a timeout because UIL said we need to hurry up between uh, possessions. And Tulia is already on the field waiting for Floyd A to get out there. They will have the ball on their own 34 yard line to start this possession here in the third quarter. Floyd Ada's had the ball three. This is their third possession, and their first two resulted in turnovers. And see if they can shake that off. Glasscock at quarterback throws to the right, and the pass is short, looking for Aiden Trevino, kind of on a down and out pattern that bounces shy of him. It was low and, kind of behind him there. Yes. So second and 10 now coming uh, for the Whirlwinds. Floyd Ada's been in the shotgun the entire ball game tonight. Two wide outs to each side of the field, one set back, running back, snap to Glasscock. Glasscock sacked. looking for help and it'll be sacked back inside of the 25 yard line as the pass coverage broke down and uh, breaking through for the uh, Tulia Hornets that time. Uh, one of them was Daniel Velasquez, also Andrew Berrios there for the Hornets. So the ball's placed back at the 26 yard line and now third down and long yardage. 
Close to 20 is going to be needed in this situation right here for Floyd Ada from their own 26 yard line. And we have got a timeout taken by the Whirlwinds. We'll break with them as Floyd Ada trails 19 to nothing here late in the third quarter of play. This is Whirl with Paul on 1061 Flip FM. Back here at Charles Tire Stadium, Nick Long and Randall Sims here with you. Uh, we have third and 18 for Whirlwinds down 19 to nothing from their own 26 yard line. Three wide outs to the side for Florida. Ada. Glasscock drops back to the 15, screen pass to the left and the re running back, the receiver catches it but quickly is stopped and going to lose another yard or so Ooh. back inside the 25. So the screen pass not executed correctly and Floyd Ada loses yardage and now it is fourth down and nearly 20 will be needed for the Whirlwinds as they're back in that dark corner <laughs> to uh, punt the ball away. The advantage is nobody can see you coming from that corner. There's, it's, it's pretty dark. I am. I'm a little disappointed with the lighting here. Rolls the ball back to the punter, and he is in trouble. Wow. They're going to be thrown for a loss on the punt attempt back at near the five-yard line. Looks like they're going to uh, uh, tackle him at the six, and that is where the Tulia Hornets will have it at Floyd Davis. Six yard line with two minutes and 11 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And Tulia with a 19 to nothing lead. They've scored one touchdown in each quarter in this ball game tonight. They're now back in the wishbone attack. One receiver wide, full backfield, gets right ahead, and running back is into the end zone, standing up for a touchdown for the Atulia Hornets. Medea. Uh, Medea. I believe so, number eight. And he is down on the ground, but it is a touchdown for the Atulia Hornets. And uh, Cohen Medea was the one that uh, scored on the touchdown run. It's his second touchdown of the night, I believe. I will confirm that after the after the point after is Toya took everybody off the field after having some people out to line up for an extra kick. And maybe Toya's going through the same problems that Florida has. You know, Florida didn't ever announce a kicker for officially. Isn't that right, Nick? That is uh, correct. Which is kind of weird for Florida. Florida has had the luck of having some quality kickers for the last several years, dating back all, all the way back to 2014 with Miguel Pena. And then Pablo Mendoza and Alexis Alvarado, they've held the helm and had some excellent kickers uh, for Florida for the last several years since 2014. So not, not, don't, not the case so far. 25 to nothing and a two-point attempt and McCaslin rolls left in the pass uh, incomplete looking in uh, just uh, the pylon there on the uh, northwest corner. So another uh, failed extra point and uh, Tulia's lead is now 26 to nothing over the Florida Whirlwinds. We'll 25, be back. 25. 
25 to nothing, and we'll be back with the Hornet kickoff right after this timeout. Back at Charles Tire Stadium as we play here in the third quarter of play. Two minutes, six seconds to go in the stands. Uh, Tulia had a 13 to nothing lead at halftime, and they have added on two more touchdowns here at half. They lead five to nothing over the whirlwinds in this opener. A kick wow. to the field, and it gets away from oh, 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 oh. the Floydata receiver. And Tulia is thinking they have scooped the ball up and they've moved it down. Inside of the five, see where they place down. Over there on that dark side, the Florida receiver, a short receiver, up near the 20 or so, never fielded the ball cleanly, apparently did touch it, Randall. And Tulia Tulia's got it, is right? going to come up with a uh, break here, I believe, yeah. on the kicking game. Kicked it into yeah. the dark corner. And they're going to talk about it. I'm gonna wait to put this stat in. I don't even see. I don't even have that option on my. I'm gonna have to record that as a onside kick because I don't even have that option. So not data is now going, and they're gonna huddle back near the end zone. So I'm anticipating the whirlwinds must. Well. Now they're lining up in a defensive formation, so Tulia does have the football at the seven. Is that where it's at? Eight, what scoreboard? It's eight, and so that's where the uh, Hornets will have it on a fumble on the uh, kickoff. And, and, that's, and that's 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 what you got recorded as, but it wasn't really a fumble. Nobody even went over to cover the ball. It just bounced all the way down there and Tulia was on it. Hand off to the left side, and the running back, uh, or that's the quarterback keeping the ball, McCaslin, and McCaslin gets inside the pipe and down to about the four yard line, and it's going to be second and go at that location. So now Floyd Data has had three turnovers and also unable to execute a punt attempt There's a flag in this on the third play. quarter of play. Flag play against Toya. Where will they step off the yardage in this situation? The McCaslin, the ball carrier, got it down to the Whirlwind's four yard line. And see where It was a holding penalty and then an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Toya during that play. So they'll go with the, the, the most substantial one, I assume. The ball was spotted about the three, and that'll move. If it's unsportsmanlike conduct, that should move back out to the 18, correct? <laughs> well, see, I would, it would be a double-digit step off for sure. Well, they're uh, going to mark it at the eight. So they'll mark it off from there, and they'll bring it out. You, you're correct on the – Mercy, how far are they going? They're going back out across the Good 30. To the 38-yard line. Let me that pull. play ended up somewhere, Randall, between the three and the four. Yep. And, and then they get yardage stepped off. Oh. Did, did they tack on two 15-yard penalties? I didn't think you were supposed to – Stack, I thought it was the most severe one, but who knows? Well, they <laughs> they off a bunch. Yeah, it's out 38. I thought that official was going to fix it, take a walk yeah, and uh, head out the stadium the I thought he, he was, was stepping it off. I thought he was looking at his Fitbit trying to get steps in for the day. <laughs> 145 to go third. It's first and 38. McCaslin throwing it deep, and it's incomplete as it goes into the dark zone. <laughs> 
into the darkness. <laughs> well, I am going to have fun with the dark corner of the end zone where I get to work on Monday. I am going to. Uh, it's going to be an issue. <laughs> So now the incomplete pass stops the clock with a minute 38 to go in this third quarter of play, a 25 to nothing lead by the Tulia Hornets. McCaslin rolling right, he throws and it is caught inside of the 35 yard line. And you can't really see the numbers until they, it, they come out of the shot. I think it's eight. I think that's what it was. But it's hard to if, tell. If it is, that would be Medea. And uh, Maida, I mean, that would bring a third down and still 33. Ball inside of the 33. Tulia on Floyd Ada's end of the field. Screen pass trying to be set up. And they drop the ball off to Bunn. Bunn at the 30, 25, 20. And gets down near the 12 or 13 yard line. And he is thrown out of bounds at that location. A good play that time. That covered nearly 20 yards. But it's going to be short of a fourth down. Uh, first down, it's going to bring still a fourth and goal at the 13-yard line, I think. I think you're right. <laughs> That's what I'm going to go with. So the Hornets are going for it, and McCaslin will be in the shotgun. Fourth and 13 at Floydata's 13. Rolling right, throws in the, to the right side, and it is caught at the six and the receiver falls to the four yard line. It's going to be stopped and Floyd Ada's defense was able to hold on and stop the whirlwinds and a very unusual uh, offensive series there and uh, that included a 30 yard step off of penalty yardage against the Hornets. Yeah, I think Fra Franco was the receiver. He got it down to inside the five yard line and that's where Floyd will take over on downs with 42 seconds left to play in there here in the third. So Floyd Dado will be operating in the uh, dark corner here. Are those vision binoculars there, Nick? <laughs> no, <but> I, <laughs> never thought of bringing them before. <laughs> I didn't think you needed them. I don't have them. a pair, but. <laughs> I didn't think you needed them. But. I may need to go to a sporting good. Uh, Glasscock will take the snap in the end zone. Drops back halfway in the end zone. He throws and the pass is caught at the seven yard line, the receiver and fights his way to the eight yard line, a gain of nearly three Mendoza on the that uh, pass completion. Mendoza was the receiver that got it out almost to the 10, just shy of the 10, we'll call it the 10. Second and five. So, 13 seconds left. Clock is rolling, this more than likely well, I don't even think Floyd yep. is going to attempt to run a play, and they're going to let the third quarter clock run out. And so we will be going to the fourth, and the Tulia Hornets leading by a score of 25 to nothing over the Floyd Ada Whirlwinds as Tulia uh, took advantage of a couple of three turnovers in that third quarter of play to Build their lead up to 25 to zero. You're listening to Rowan Football on 106.1 Flip FM.
Member NCUA. Back here at Charles Tire Stadium in Floydata, Nick Long and Randall Sims with you. And might throw in our video yeah, guy, Alex, great. with us here. And uh, we appreciate having him with us here in the uh, booth. As we go to the fourth quarter of play, Floydata down by a score of 25 to nothing to the uh, Tulia Hornets. Snap to the quarterback. Albert has now in the game, and he crosses. And, and we get near the 15-yard line in the first down mark and see if he was able to make it. And I think... There's a flag. I don't know what... It, they just picked up. I don't do anything with it. Tulia seems to now be moving towards the north goal line that will be against the uh, Hornet. And this is going to be... 15 yards out to the 30. And that whirlwinds, I think, may have picked up the first down anyway on the run, I but they get more right. tacked on with the uh, Tulia Pill. Big run by Alvarado. He's out, and Glasscox in now at quarterback. Two wide outs to the left, slot back to the left side for the wins. And the give to Lopez, the running back, and he gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Really no gain for Florida's offense. In the fourth quarter here, Tulia leads 25 to nothing over the Whirlwinds. 11-20 left to play here in the fourth. What a knot. That is um, warm and no wind. Kind of an unusual knot here in West Texas. No wind, really. No lights either on one of the field. <laughs> on one corner. <laughs> yes. 75% light, light <laughs> shooting for a win at Charles Tire Stadium. Pass to the left side, Eden Trevino hauls in the reception and Trevino steps out at the data 38 yard line. Whirlwinds next week will travel to Lotney, the Longhorns tonight, playing their opener against the Rups Eagles. Returning to 11 man football for the second year. And the Tulia Hornets will be going against Brownfield Cubs next week. Pass to the left side. Saul Reyes steps away from a defender, crosses the feet, and gets a first down and is out of bound at Florida's 44-yard line. Pretty little nifty dance move that yep. time by Saul Reyes. And after the catch, got another seven or so yards. Yep, he is out to the 44. Great move. Talking about ropes, that's a team that's on the move. That's a community that's on the move. They went from six man to two A, and I bet in two years, they're not in two A anymore. That community is growing like crazy. Oh, wait, really? So, first down for Floyd Ada. Pass to the left side, and this one is caught. And again, by Aiden Trevino. Trevino so far, in the preseason practices, scrimmages, and now tonight is, is, is proven to be a good, sure-handed receiver on the short passing game. He's got probably three receptions at least tonight. I believe you're right. And okay. So he gained five on that play, and it's second and five later at their 49-yard line. And tried to hand off to the running back, and it got away from him. No, it was not a clean exchange from the quarterback and the running back, and Florida has fumbled the ball away, and Tulia has taken advantage of it and jumped on the ball and stops the wins at the Whirlwinds 47-yard line. And that's where the Tulia will have the football with 9.57 to go in the ball game and a 25 to nothing lead. The first half, it was Tulia that had two turnovers, but still led 13 to nothing. But in the second half, Floydata has given up the ball four times. Quarterback in the shotgun, and gives the ball off. Rodriguez going around the left end, 45-40, far sideline, still going! He breaks loose, 30. 25-20, down to the 10, and runs down inside of the five-yard line 
as Jeremy Rodriguez. I don't know how he did it, Randall, but it looked like he was going to get a seven or so yard gain and got on the far sideline and somehow just <laughs> shot out of the pack. <laughs> just blew out of everybody, yeah. <laughs> uh, really turned on the speed. He's not that big of a guy. Five foot five, 130 pounds. Sometimes they're the hardest to bring down. You can't get them. They're too quick. So a good run of 42 yards that time by Jeremy Rodriguez for the Tulia Hornets. And they are knocking on Florida's door again with nine minutes uh, to go here in the ball game. Got a little delay here. I'm not sure what the officials are talking about. And then I, is this, oh, oh, we got a player down on the far sideline. That's what it was. So now uh, the players yet to get off of the field for Floyd. Uh, and the water girls have gone out to take the whirlwinds yes. a drink. And Tony was breaking out a load of the line. But. Yeah, I just looked across, saw Coach Compton out past the hash marks, headed over to Tulia's sideline, and I was like, fight, fight. Fight. I was thinking, but then it wasn't. It was a player down. <laughs> so here comes Tooley. First and goal at Florida's five yard line. 8.50 to go here in the ball game. And a full touchdown lead. Hand off to the right side, and the running back is caught in the uh, backfield as the. And tackle was made behind the uh, line of scrimmage for the uh, whirlwinds by Debbie Ramos back at the 10. So it's going to be second and goal at that location for the Tulia Hornets deep in whirlwind territory. Big defensive play by Florida. Five-yard loss for Tulia. Rolling left is McCaslin and he throws. The receiver brings it in at the five and fights his way down to near the one-yard line. Let's see who pops up there. Is that five? I can't see. So let's see where they're going to place the ball. It looks like it's at the one-yard line. And I'm sorry, Randall, not for sure who that receiver for the Hornets five. was. I think it's five. If so, that'd be Noah Barrientos for Tulia. They're at the one. Third, third and goal at the one. Tulia is seven and a half to go here in the game. Already leading 25 to nothing, and the Hornets are threatening for more. And they come to the line of scrimmage, and time they're going to take a timeout. And we'll take a break with them. 7.24 to go in the game. 20 to nothing, Tully Hornet lead. This is Whirlwind Football on KFLIP 106-1. Back here at Charles Tire Stadium and a third and goal situation and the Hornets sneaking in on a run. Yeah, and they, like and they, they have now built up a 31 to nothing lead on a crack sneak by Travin McCaslin. And now the Tulia Hornets, they have, uh, for three touchdowns in the second half. The ball is placed, kicks on the way, it is up, and it is good. Seven minutes, 20 seconds left here in the ball game in this 2021 season opener, 
and the Tulia Hornets have been extremely opportunistic in the second half of play, and they have now built up a 30 to nothing lead over the Florida Whirlwinds. Back with a Hornets kickoff after this timeout on Flip FM. I'm James with Western Equipment. Listen up any high school junior and senior and any parent or grandparent of any high school junior or senior. By your junior and senior year, it's time to start planning for a job. Right now, if you don't know what you want to do, pick up the John Deere Ag Tech program at Western Equipment. It's a two-year program. Afterwards, we guarantee you a solid job at one of our 21 locations in Texas, Oklahoma, or New Mexico. Now is the time. Visit westwestequip.com forward slash careers for more information to apply. Back at Charles Tire Stadium and the Florida Whirlwinds after the kickoff get the ball at their 35 yard line and that is where they will have possession and the uh, Tulia Hornets with a 32 to nothing lead at this point of the game. Flash Cox still in at quarterback. Takes the snap, gives off, and straight ahead, Mendoza. And Mendoza gains about five yards near the 40. Well, going to place it at the 39, so a four-yard gain there on first down for the Whirlwinds. Tulia has scored in every quarter of this uh, ball game. And had two that they scored in the third quarter. Tide is taken on the field. <laughs> that, Why not? And uh, Florida will come to the sidelines. They trail 30 to nothing to Tulia, listening to Whirlwind Football on 1-1 Flip FM. Back here at Charles Tire Stadium. And Florida Whirlwinds down by a score of 32 to nothing. They trail 13 to nothing at halftime. Quarterback uh, Trevon McCaslin has had a TD pass and a TD run. Coin McHeda has had two touchdown runs for the uh, Hornets uh, tonight. Fire carrier on that play was Santos, number four for Florida. He gets it out close to the to midfield. Gonna be stopped short by three yards. But he gets the first down as the chains move, and they'll place it down at the 47-yard line. Whirlwinds will operate with six minutes left here in the game. Handoff straight ahead, and no going as the running back was met. Head on by a big white wall yeah. at the uh, line of, of Grimmage. And Santos got the try, got the handoff and didn't possess it, popped it up in the air, and Floyd is fortunate to come away with that. Second and 11 now for Floyd Ada. Wide outs to each side of the field. Coming left is Mendoza. Mendoza trying to round the left corner. Got a couple of yards, got near midfield, gain of nearly three on that carry, but could not get around the corner or correction. That uh, ball carrier Santos uh, was uh, Javier Santos that time for Floyd Ada. Floyd well, trying something different here late in the game. See what works. This is what preseason is for, is to work your kinks, figure out, find out what works. Third and seven, snap back to Glasscock. 
Glasscock's gonna air it out deep down the far sideline and once it intercepted almost went into the dark zone and inside of the 20. <laughs> yep. I thought there for a moment, Randall, that the Tulia defender went high enough and brought that thing down, but apparently not. There was and two. And it falls incomplete. There was two of them bird dogging the, the pass, but they I think it went out over their arms. It's hard to tell. <laughs> Goes in that dark area down there, and I don't think anybody can track what's happening. So now third down or fourth and seven, Florida going for it just to inside midfield, half straight ahead to Santos. He fights down to the 45 yard line of Tulna, but he's going to be short of a whirlwind first down and he is going to be stopped and ball will go on down to the Tulna and they will have the ball at their own 45 yard line. Four minutes and 22 seconds left here in this season and Tulia enjoying a comfortable margin of 32 to nothing. Tulia's gonna put it in cruise control here. And Vaughn has taken over as the quarterback for McCaslin, so he is probably done for the night. Handoff and the running back for the Hornets, Franco. And Franco does not get back to the line of scrimmage as he was tackled on that far side by the Florida defense. And they lose two back to the 43 yard line. Whirlwinds next Friday will be at Lightning. And then two weeks from tonight, they'll be back home. Homecoming. As the Asmire Bobcats come here for yeah. homecoming. An unusual homecoming. First time it's not on the, yeah, Floyd's trying to do thing. Pass to the right side. Vaughn, the quarterback, it's incomplete. Rodriguez was back on the coverage. Reyes was the intended receiver for the Hornets. Floyd County Championship next week, you mentioned. Uh, did not get to get played last year due to COVID. Lotney was had a player uh, that tested positive. They didn't play that game last year, and Floyd played Kermit during the Lotney game last year. Yes. And that was the uh, in our game here, right? Yes. At Charles Tire Stadium that they won. Yep. Pass to the right side. Reyes the, on the receiving end. The ball across midfield, the 46. Very close to a Tulia first down with 2.40 to go here to game. And the Hornets have been short at that location. Tulia in front, 32 to nothing, they led at the end of the first, seven to zero, 13 to nothing at half, scored two touchdowns in the third to build up a 25 to nothing advantage and added more here in the fourth to build up to the score that we now have, a 32 to nothing Tulia. And whistles blow and false start. They didn't get that fourth down and short yardage playoff and it's going to be against the Hornets. 207 left to play the game. Fall start will tool you up. Makes it a fourth and six situation. They got to get it to Florida's 45 for a first down. Snap to Bond. Rolling left. He throws. And incomplete. incomplete. Really, Randall, you get up past that far hash mark <laughs> shattered over there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not just affects that corner. It really affects yeah. over there. I mean, yep. from our vantage point. And now the ball goes over on downs and Floyd Ada will be back at the Tulia 49 yard line is where they will have possession with a minute 48 to go here in the season opener. Floyd needs to do something to get something positive going. Hand off up the middle and the ball carrier Santos. fights for about four yards. You know, Santos, Javier Santos, the ball carrier. So he gets three, I believe, yeah, on that carry. Me, and the clock continues to roll. And Floyd Ada not going to be in any kind of hurry and let this game wind out. 
Snap to Glasscock, play action, passes right side, and is caught at the line of scrimmage, and or really yards back and loses yardage back to the 49 is where the Floyd Ada receiver is brought down. So loss of pitch, and we've got less than a minute to go here in this uh, season debut. And the clock is rolling with 35 seconds to go in the contest. And handoff, so around the left end, 45, lunges to the 41, short of a Floyd Data. First down by a couple of yards by Javier Santos. And clock continues to roll, less than 10 seconds. And this one is about to be over. Stick a fork in it. And the Julia Hornets have come into Charles Tire Stadium and have shut out the Florida Whirlwinds to begin the 2021 season by a 32 to nothing margin. We'll be back for the game reports to take a look at the final stats. You're listening to Florida Whirlwind Football on 61 Flip FM. Back here at Charles Tire Stadium, Long and Rando Sims with you and the Florida Whirlwinds uh, fall in the season opener in the debut of Mr. J.R. Cotton as the Tulia Hornets came in to town tonight and uh, were an op opportunistic ball club, especially uh, in the uh, second half of play. Florida took the opening kickoff and uh, made a first down, but was stopped uh, at the uh, 40, and uh, the Hornets got good field position, and uh, they executed five plays and scored the first game's touchdown on a good-looking 26-yard pass from Trevon McCaslin to Braden Franco. And uh, with 8.51 to go in the first after the extra point kick, Tully had a seven to nothing lead. We moved into the second quarter of play and uh, Floyd Ada had stopped one possession with the first of two interceptions that they had uh, in the first half of play. But on the fourth time Tulia had the ball, they put together an 80 yard 10 play drive that uh, ended in uh, Cohen uh, Maheda scoring on a 10 yard run 
The extra point kick was blocked. Tulia's lead was 13 to nothing with 4.01 to go in the half, and that is the way it would end at halftime. In the second half of play, Floyd Ada uh, really had their troubles in the uh, third quarter with a total of uh, three turnovers in that third quarter of play. Tulia uh, turned one of them into a touchdown on a pick six, uh, a 35-yard return by Ethan Reyes. Then uh, the five minutes later, the Hornets scored again after they got great field position at Floyd to six with a uh, breakdown in the kicking game on a punt. And uh, the Hornets, uh, Mahata scored his second touchdown of the game. And then uh, Tulia had a 25 to nothing lead. And they added one more score in the fourth quarter on a one yard quarterback sneak by McCaslin uh, to put them up 32 to nothing. And uh, that's the way uh, this ball game uh, would end. And, you know, Randall, you, you kind of look back at this and you're curious to hear your numbers on this, but uh, Floyd Ada had four turnovers in the, in the second half of play and prevented them from making any type of comeback attempt in that second half. Well, Floyd Ada won one aspect of the game. They won on penalties. Floyd only had two penalties in the game. Uh, to compared to Tulia's nine penalties for 75 yards. Other than that, Tulia dominated on – well, didn't dominate, but they, they led on offense, one, uh, 247 yards total offense, plays 147 yards. Uh, Tulia ran 48 plays to Florida's 56. Uh, Rushing-wise, uh, Tulia had 84 yards rushing, and Florida had 73 Receiving, Tulia had 163 yards rush uh, uh, passing, Florida with a 101 turnovers. You got it. Four for Florida, two for uh, Tulia. Uh, Florida lost two fumbles and two interceptions, just two interceptions thrown by Tulia. Uh, there was a sack, a uh, defensive sack by Tulia. They got that. First downs was pretty even. Uh, Florida with 11, Toya with 12. Looking at players of the game, McCaslin had 163 yards total uh, passing with a touchdown, two interceptions. Trace Glasscock, 101 yards uh, passing with two interceptions. Rushing, Toya had some players tonight. Rodriguez had 29 yards. McCaslin with 20. Cedillo with 17. And uh, Mejia with uh, 14 yards, two touchdowns. He didn't have many yards, but he made it count whenever he touched the ball. Looking at Floyd Ada, uh, Mendoza touched the ball nine times tonight for 39 yards. Santos seven times for 31 yards. Alvarado three times for 10 yards. Receiving wise, Saul Reyes, Floyd's leading receiver with 45 yards on four uh, receptions. Trevino, six receptions, 31 yards. Uh, Jordan Powell for Tulia had three receptions for 52 yards. Franco had three receptions, 35 yards, and a touchdown. And that's about it. Whenever it comes to stats, we can go in more in depth, but I don't know that we need to. I think I pretty much touched on everything. I think you did, Randall. A good job on that. Uh, And uh, uh, again, Tulia had. Did you say nine penalties in the game? I yes, think you said for and, 75 and, yards. Uh, so Floyd Ada was definitely much lower in that with just two. But the turnover margin, four to two, uh, Floyd Ada lost in that category and played a big factor uh, in this ball game. This is a young team of Floyd Ada uh, with just five seniors, and there's ten sophomores on this team. And uh, so uh, uh, there's some talent. Uh, it's just a matter of everything getting gelled uh, together and uh, all of that. But uh, anyway, they'll go back to the drawing board and continue to work hard. There's no doubt that's what J.R. Compton and his staff has got the whirlwinds doing. And uh, I, I, probably not a better game that can be on your schedule to get your <laughs> attention turned back around with Lotney on the horizon next week. Well, it's the county championship. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big rival. And that's one everybody looks forward to. It's been two years in the making now because they didn't get to play it last year. And we'll we'll be that's an exciting game to, to cover. 
All right. Randall enjoyed it very much. Look forward to the rest of the season. And uh, we'll be back next week. We'll be broadcasting from Mitchell Zimmerman Field in Lotney and uh, taking on the Longhorns, Tulia. Uh, they will be going back to play their home opener against the Brownfield Cubs uh, next week. So, for Randall Sims, this is Nick Long, hoping you enjoy our coverage tonight of Whirlwind Football. Uh, not the score we'd hope as Tulia uh, wins the game by a score of 32 to nothing. Until next Friday, everybody have themselves a good weekend. We'll talk to you next week for more Florida Whirlwind Football on 1061 Flip FM.